All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, check it out, baby. You know, we're back. We're giving you an extra video this week. I know I was only going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but these mock drafts really ain't a big, 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 big chunk of my time to go out of my way and make for you guys. So I figured the more value and the more content I can put out for you, the better. So I'm throwing in an extra mock draft for you guys on this beautiful, beautiful Saturday morning even though I'm actually doing this on Wednesday. But by the time y'all see it, it's going to be Saturday. And I wanted to do this one on Yahoo. Um, and I'm picking from the 11th spot. And I did that on purpose. Most of the mock drafts I've done, I've just picked randomly. But I get a lot of questions about where is my preferred draft spot this year. And it's very early to still to have a preferred draft spot, I would say, to you know to know – where you see the most value coming in your drafts and depending on what your league scoring settings and all that kind of stuff are. Um, but the way it's shaping up and the research I've done so far, I am kind of coming down to a conclusion of where I do want to be picking this year. And it's mo like most years, uh, I, I would prefer being in the top of the draft, not necessarily number one, but probably in the top four, maybe five picks. Um, so that you get either one of the top running backs in Le'Veon Bell, Gurley, David Johnson, or Zeke. Or, you know, if you want to, if, if you're all in on Antonio Brown being, uh, you know, the corner piece of your team, I wouldn't be mad at all about that with my fifth overall pick. If I'm not in those top five picks and I do not hate, um, who was I going to say, like Saquon Barkley as a workhorse there or, you know, Kamara or something uh, between picks like six and eight, I'm just not necessarily sure you get as much value. Uh, Barkley's my favorite pick after those top five, but if I'm not picking in the top, I, I want to be at the end of the first round. So I did want to pick 11 to show you guys why I, I kind of like the setup here. And it's because once you get into that middle tier, like you see Kareem Hunt ranked number like nine, Alvin Kamara ranked seven, um, even Barkley back at 13. The rankings here are going to be very different than what I've seen in – the best ball on the draft app. If you if you watch the mock draft I did on draft.com yesterday, uh, the rank is going to be very different. Like Leonard Fournette's probably ranked like number nine. And uh, yeah, wow. Okay. So these are going to be the kind of like crazy rankings compared to that. So you're, I'm going to be able to take advantage of here. But then again, like as much as you might think that there are better ADPs on, on the draft app, you're going to be drafting with some people that didn't pay attention to fantasy football whatsoever during the preseason. So this is realistic and this could happen to you. So the reason I like the end of the draft 11 to 14, right? Those are my two picks. 11, then there's 12, 13, 14 is because with 11 and 14, you're pretty much guaranteed a workhorse running back as well as a high-end elite wide receiver. And you pretty much get your choice of one of the two that you want there. So rather than having pick like seven where maybe you'll get like a Kareem Hunt or something like that, uh, and maybe like a then, a De or a DeAndre Hopkins, since you have a later pick in the second round, um, there's a good chance that the, I think there's like a tier kind of fall off here where after like this pick right here, like 13, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen, Quan Barkley. And then I would also probably put Dalvin Cook up there and even Melvin Gordon. But after like these first like 13, 14 picks, I think a tier kind of drops off there. So I want to be within those, the, that first kind of tier where I could still get my choice of Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen as my wide receiver one on the way back. Um, I do want to escape the first couple rounds with two running backs out of my first three picks or three running backs out of my first four picks. And I think at the end of uh, – if you're picking at the end of round one, you, you you for sure get one of them in the first round. And if two of them drop there, then, you know, even better. Um, so so that's kind of why I like at the end of the first round. Let's see who we got off the board. Gurley, Bell, Brown, Dave Johnson, Zeke. How many, many rounds, how many first rounds are going to go or how they're going to start? And we see two more of the top receivers go off the board. So right now, uh, I have Barkley ranked as like my sixth or seventh player. So without a doubt in my mind, he is going to be my pick here. I just think he, I think he gives you 300 touch. Um, I think it's 300 touch. The probability of him hitting 300 touches is, is high. And I think he's just as good as Babette to hit that number as everyone outside of like Zeke, Le'Veon Bell, and those top guys. So I think you're getting basically those elite running backs at a discount. Um, and then you see two more wide receivers go off the board. So the wide receivers went quick. And now I still have my pick of another top running back. Like I like Gordon, Cook, Fournette, all ranked inside my top 12. Um and this kind of comes down to preference, right? Like, which other running back do you want? I love A.J. Green. I love Devontae Adams as well. But I'd rather have another workhorse running back if I can. 
And I like the fact that Yahoo probably sw- finally switched to two running backs, two wide receivers, and a flex. So uh, it's coming down quickly. So, um, guys, and, and like I've said a lot this offseason, my rankings and my love for players is going to change on a weekly, if not daily basis, depending on new insight, new stats, new analysis, new podcasts I listen to, new blogs I read, and, you know, just the takeaways I get from them. So, you know, like – um, I was incredibly high on Leonard Fournette in the beginning of the year. I think he was like my sixth ranked overall player. Um, and then Kamara, the Ingram suspension happened. And then, you know, I've read a few other things and I like Melvin Gordon a little bit more and a little bit more as the years gone by, as the off season has gone by. Dalvin Cook's a guy who I've pulled the reins back a little bit on still a top 12 player for me, probably top 13 or 14, maybe. Um, but I think of Latavius Murray and I don't think Dalvin Cook is the best bet to be the goal line back there. And I think that could be a big influence on his his scoring upside right I, I wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if he ended up with 1300 14 yards 13 or 1400 yards but it also wouldn't surprise me if he finished with six touchdowns you know what I mean and Latavius Murray had six or seven rushing touchdowns on his own so um I think Cook's scoring opportunities are a little scary for me just because I think they love to use Latavius Murray and they showed it last year right they used him so many times on the one yard line they did it the year before um, and if he's successful doing it, why change it from a real life football perspective? You know what I mean? So then we had the other running backs go right off the board after Melvin Gordon, AJ Green, Dalvin Cook, Fournette, Devontae Adams, Amari Cooper, 19th overall. Yeah, I'll take a hard pass on that one. McCoy at 20, I like as a value. Um, and then we'll see who drops to me here because I haven't done drafts on Yahoo. So who do I like? That'll maybe be dropping to me. Um, I would like Stefan Diggs here. I picked 35, 37. <laughs> it's funny, bro. I get some funny emails. Um, I got an email about when someone wanting to join in the uh, the live draft that we're having in New York City this August. So, guys, that's one of my subscriber leagues I'm, I'm opening up to you guys. I am taking nine people, and you guys are going to come out to New York City. And I rented an amazing Airbnb. It's like a penthouse in Manhattan in Hell's Kitchen. If you've never been to New York, this is a dope opportunity. This is not just a fantasy football league. It's not just a draft. This is an experience. We're going to kick it Friday through Sunday. So Friday night, Saturday night, check out of the Airbnb on Sunday morning. Dope Airbnb. We're going to have a live fantasy football draft there with only my subscribers, and that's going to be our league for the year. It's going to be a super personal event, and uh, I'm bringing out nine of you guys, so we're going to be a league, and we're going to – you know, get the, get the draft catered and we're going to go out and hit fucking boozy brunch. One of the, one of the afternoons and we're going to go out at night and just experience Manhattan. And it's going to be a very, very cool, unforgettable weekend. So if you are interested, uh, it's going to be a a much higher price point than most fantasy football leagues you're in, but this is all inclusive. It will pay for all your food for the weekend, all the drinks for the weekend, the shelter for the weekend, of course, any transportation around New York city that we have. Um, so it's going to be a lot more expensive than a normal fantasy football league. But if you are interested, in joining. Um, if you want me to consider you for the league, shoot me an email, nick at bigdogsfantasy.com, which will be linked below in the description. And I will be sure to shoot you some info back and see if it would be a good fit for you. And if you would uh, still enjoy joining the league. So we are getting down to, let's see, uh, Fitz went early. That's the earliest I've seen Fitz go 30th overall. Aaron Rodgers went 25th. Jerk McKinnon went 24th. Okay. Um, so who are guys I'm looking at? Definitely Stefan Diggs I would be happy with as my wide receiver one. T.Y. Hilton, I would absolutely be fine with him as my wide receiver one as well. I am fully expecting Andrew Luck to be on the field for week one. So I think you're getting him at a value if you're drafting right now. C-Mac almost dropped to me. It's pretty late in the draft right now, 35 to 38. Those are my next picks. And again, there's still a flex spot open, so I'd be happily taking a running back if I saw a good value there. Um if I'm just looking straight off the board, let's see. Let's go to the flex. Yeah, get these quarterbacks out of my face. Two I Hilton's definitely a guy I'm looking at. Stefan Diggs. I like Juju, but I would take those other two wide receivers for sure. Joe Mixon I like a lot. Let me see if anyone just fell randomly. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, I would probably go mm, – so what I would do normally – okay, I draft T.Y. Hilton there. Um, but what I would do is – Look at Bajan. I would look at who's in between me. Okay, so he took two wide receivers, right? So that would mean there's a much more likely chance of him taking a running back in those because he has back to back picks now. He would probably take a running back there at one of those two picks. So I would say the more likely thing that he'll do um, is to take a running back over a wide receiver. And that would, 
In turn, looking back on it, I was wrong. He took Kenyon Drake, but there's more probability of him taking Joe Mixon than one of the guys I was looking at. So I would have taken Joe Mixon in hindsight and left T.Y. Hilton on the board thinking that he was going to take two running backs after going with two wide receivers. Those are the things you have to think about when you're in the middle of a live draft. Now he went um, there and Joe Mixon, even if you guys are of uh, the belief that Joe Mixon has a lower floor than I do, I think he's a top 15 running back this year. Uh, getting him at pick 38 is a great value. Uh, I'm not sure how many running backs went before him, but it had to have been like 18 or 19. So I'm absolutely happy with Joe Mixon as my flex player, which is fantastic in my opinion. Um, I think for a lot of leagues, you're probably going to have to pay up a late second round, if not an early third round price for him come August. Um, so that being said, to get him all the way down here, I'm, I'm super happy about I had him in my top three breakout videos for running backs, which I put out on Wednesday. So if you're seeing this, it's already released. You can go check it out on my channel, my top three breakout running backs. I'm doing a breakout video every year. I mean, every week on Wednesdays. Um, what else do we got? Okay, so we had a couple of QBs. Wilson, Brady. Guys, I can't say this enough. Um, in a one quarterback league, it makes absolutely no sense to take a quarterback in the top 50 picks. Makes not a damn piece of sense, bros. No sense because the the quarterback depth is so 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 um, so deep that the the thing to do see the thing with quarterbacks and and streaming tight ends um, so quarterbacks is like most of them their floor is pretty safe right if you're picking say you pick two quarterbacks right wait late round pick two decent quarterbacks that have a a high floor. They all have high floors pretty much, right? They all have decent floors. If you pick two quarterbacks that you think have high ceilings, since they already have basically high floors ingrained into them, there's a good chance one of them hits as a high ceiling guy and becomes this year's Alex Smith or becomes two years ago's Matt Ryan. You know what I mean? All guys with nice floors that have high ceiling possibilities. But that's why I suggest just leaving alone the quarterback position. Don't take one of these quarterbacks in the top 50 picks. It makes absolutely no sense because on a points per game basis, if you hit on one of those late round guys that has really high ceiling and they hit their ceiling, they're going to be probably just as productive as a Tom Brady or just as productive as one of these other quarterbacks going in the early rounds. It just doesn't make sense. Um, the reason I wouldn't say the same thing about the tight end is because their floors are really low. So if you're banking on two guys who have high ceilings, but their floors are really low, um, there's there's always that 50-50 chance that you're getting a zero like week in and week out of tight ends, right? So that's why, I don't know, just stay away from quarterbacks in the top 50. Believe me, I'm not going to be taking quarterbacks until so late in the draft because look at this depth, man. Marcus Mariota, you can get, what is he, like fucking quarterback 40? This is ridiculous. Andrew Luck, Dak, even Dak Prescott, for as much as people are hating on him this year, he does not have weapons, but he has that rushing floor. And he was quarterback one from weeks one to eight last year, guys. He was good. And then that line got blown up and then everything, all the mojo went out the door. So Dak is even a fine streamer in my opinion here. Let's see who we got going off the board. A lot of wide receivers, a lot of rookies. Um, okay, so this is a good this is a good point I could probably harp on here. I have three running backs already. And I would absolutely love to take Sony Michelle here. And I actually might think about doing it, to be honest with you. But the fact that since it's a redraft league, right, you're not always so concerned about depth. You're only playing for one year, so you need your starters to be very, very, very good. So I would probably be looking at a wide receiver here. Um, but since the wide receiver role would fill up my starting roster, I'm gonna probably I could probably take wide receiver and then start going best player available after that. And I really like Marvin Jones, and I'm also looking at Chris Hogan here. A lot of people, a lot of people might think fifth round, sixth round is too early for Chris Hogan. I do not think so. With the Edelman injury, man, he is the only deep threat. He's going to see so many targets in a Tom Brady offense that it's crazy to think he's too early here. Um, I will be taking Marvin Jones. That being said, because I think Chris Hogan is more likely to fall to me. And then if Sony Michelle lasts to me in the next pick. I will go with Sony Michelle happily, and he will be my first running back off the bench, which I couldn't be more happy about. So um, I don't hate Lamar Miller either because by default, I talked about this in yesterday's mock draft video too. We have no idea what's going on with Deonta Foreman. We don't even know if he's not going to be on the, the pup list. You know what I mean? So if if he is, if he does end up on the pup list or he ends up out of shape coming into the season, like Lamar Miller is a lock for 15 to 20 touches a game. Plus he played much better with Deshaun Watson in the lineup, which obviously will be the case in 2018. So it's a preference thing. I like Sony Michelle's ceiling more than I like Lamar Miller's floor. 
Warren Miller's not an exciting, exciting player. You know what I mean? He's like, uh, I don't know. He's like Taco Bell. Guess that shit's done, pun intended. But you're not really excited about that. I actually hate Taco Bell, so that kind of works here. So if someone took Lamar Miller right after Sony Michelle, that works for me. Um, who else are we looking at? I feel like there's probably guys that are super undervalued here. I'm going to go position by position to start and just star players that I think are going to be extreme values in the draft. I mean, if Jarvis Landry drops me, I think the hate on Jarvis Landry might be going too far. Like, it's already picked 67. Like, I get it. There's mouths to feed there. But Jarvis Landry is still a very super talented player, and he's still going to see a shitload of targets there in that Cleveland offense. So um, I think it might have been a product of the Miami offense as well that his yards per target were so low. Uh, he's a great yak player. He makes plays after the catch, and I think – I think we'll see that number improve in Cleveland. So if he keeps dropping all the way to like the seventh round, guys, Jarvis Landry becomes a very, very nice value. Don't really like Crabtree. Don't really like Funches, Pierre Garcon. I like Cooper Cup. Chris Hogan is obviously the guy I want if he falls to me. If if Corey Davis falls to me like 83, I don't have a lot of shares of him, so I'm happy there. Emmanuel Sanders, I absolutely love. Randall Cobb going all the way down here. Um, there was a podcast I was listening to, to, to today that was talking about uh, Evan Silva went on the Fantasy Feast, which is a good podcast. I suspect you guys, I, I suggest you guys listen to. Basically, he was talking about Randall Cobb and he was talking about efficiency numbers, right? He had a bad year last year, but in terms of target separation, separation he had from defenders on his targets, he was like number three in the NFL last year. Uh, in games, if you look at the splits in games with Aaron Rodgers versus without him, he was averaging over 60 receiving yards a game with Aaron Rodgers in the lineup which if you equate that out to a full season is over a th- is almost a thousand receiving yards, which is what you'd expect from a wide receiver too in a, in a green Bay offense. So Randall Cobb sneaky was, uh, was not terrible last year in that offense with Aaron Rodgers there. So if we expect the same thing, then you're getting a steal at um, this late in the draft with Randall Cobb, which is actually really crazy all the way down at 147 here. So those are the guys I'd be looking at right now. What running backs we got available. Guys, I'm really like against the satellite back movement this year. Um, I, I don't want any part of Chris Thompson, Duke Johnson. Cohen's a guy I might like, but year to year basis, man. Like, here's the thing at the end of the year, you might look back and be like, wow, these guys were overall top 12 running backs, but they're going to give you more of a headache than they are going to like satisfy your team because those are guys that it's almost impossible to predict on a week to week basis what you're getting out of them. It is so hard to predict their touchdowns, first of all. It's so hard to predict their workload. Based on game script, especially if you're picking a guy like Chris Thompson, who is going to be in Washington, who's like an average team. You're never going to go into the games expecting them to get blown out or expecting them to be up a huge amount of points. So you never really know how the games are going to turn out. So it's hard for you to predict their um, their game scripts, especially, you know, for a satellite back. So in the most part, they might end up, you know, as a steal, but you're not going to be able to play them on a week to week basis. And that in turn, like is an opportunity cost, right? You might not think about it. You might just look back at the end of the season and say something, but an opportunity cost is absolutely there in the fact that you don't know when to start them. And you might be starting them in wrong spots. You might be sitting them in right spots. So, you know, not, it's not just the fact that they might produce on a, on a random week basis, but it's opportunity costs also involved. Um, So I'm glad I got that other running back because now we're looking at, it's really falling off heavily. So I have, who do I got? Saquon Barkley, Melvin Gordon, Sony Michelle, and Joe Mixon. Four guys who I really like this year at the running back position. So um, not a lot of depth left here. So I'd probably be looking for, you know, those guys will satisfy those spots for for uh, probably like 90% of the year. So I'd probably be looking for more upside guys here. Um, I don't see a lot of value left at, at running back. So I probably, that wouldn't be my pick right now. Um, tight ends. I have talked about Delaney Walker endlessly this summer. He's my favorite value at tight end. I'm surprised he just fell to me that late while I wasn't paying attention. But Delaney Walker has gone over 800 receiving yards in four straight seasons, guys. The only reason that people are down on him this year is because the touchdown numbers were down. But when you look at the percentage of the team's touchdowns, he was still at um, 20% of the team's passing touchdowns. Let's see. I'm glad Trey Burton went right after me. I'll I'll go back into Delaney Walker in a second. See, Chris Hogan was still on the board. Let's mother fudge and go. Um, Delaney Walker, yeah, 800 yards in four straight years. Top seven fantasy tight end in four straight seasons. Touchdown number dipped to three last year. He still had a 20% target share, a 22% target share, as well as a 20% receiving touchdown share. 
it wasn't his usage that dropped off. His play, I look at game speed per Josh Herms, Myers, whatever, game speed data on airyards.com. He was running faster in 2017 than he did in 2016. So despite his old age, he's not getting any slower, guys. Laney Walker is in. It was a product of the offense. It was a product of that stone age offense, which won't be the case now that they bring in new head coach, new offense coordinator, Matt LaFleur, who was the Rams uh, coordinator last year. Their offense is going to get back on track. Mariota, who had a touchdown percentage of over five in each of his first two seasons, dropped down to 2.9%. So only 2.9% of his touchdown of his overall throws went for touchdowns last year. If that regresses back to where he was as one of the top percentage guys, like his freshman and sophomore seasons, Delaney Walker's touchdowns are going to go up insanely, right? Because his usage is still the same. His usage did not change last year at all. The only thing that dropped was his overall production as a result of the offense, guys. I'm telling you, Delaney Walker is the value of the year at tight end. He's boring, but he's the best value that I think has major touchdown upside. So it's really not that boring. Um, and as I talked about tight ends, if you want to grab a Jordan Reed or a Tyler Eifert at the end of the draft, do so. But make sure you have a tight end one first. Like Jack Doyle a lot with the fact that Andrew Luck should be back in the lineup. Like Ricky Seals-Jones a lot. Look at Jermaine Gresson. We took a lot of the snaps away from Rookie Seals Jones last year, he tore his Achilles at the end of the season, uh, week 17. So RS, RSJ, as we're going to call him from now on, should go into the year as the unquestioned starter in an offense run by Sam Bradford, who loves to throw the ball over the middle of the field. You look at his most efficient receivers over the years in history, it was, was it Jordan Matthews, it was Stephon Diggs in Minnesota, who was playing the slot at the time. It was all these over, over the middle type guys. So Sam Bradford is uh, the starting quarterback as of right now, as we see it, and it's going to highly benefit guys like Larry Fitzgerald and Ricky Seals-Jones who run their routes over the middle. So big fan of ASJ. Is, I mean, RSJ is a late sleeper, like a back-end tight end too. Who else have we got here? See, I you see, I haven't even looked at the quarterback position yet. There's literally no reason to. Matt Stafford's still on the board. Pat Mahomes, Ben Roethlisberger, Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Jameis Winston, Dak Prescott. So, you know, here is where I'd probably start making the cutoff, like where I want to look at guys. So if I see like a big run of quarterbacks, like that, there's probably going to be a run that goes on in between here and here. So I'd look at what these next three guys do. If they go like quarterback, 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 I might think about taking one in these next two rounds. I'd also look at this guy already has a quarterback, so he's not going to take another one probably. All these guys have quarterbacks for the most part, so they're probably not going to take it. So here's the thing, right? Ten teams can take their starting quarterback, and then you still have so many good picks here to choose from quarterbacks. So you don't have to take one. Why take a quarterback when you have Cooper Cup there for the taking? When you have a guy like Julian Edelman who come back and could give you 12 PPR points a game. But my favorite here is Emmanuel Sanders. I think he's one of the most undervalued players, man. Look at Emmanuel Sanders, and he's definitely going to be my pick here just because I don't see any running back value right now. Look at Emmanuel Sanders. And what I see was, I mean, he had the high ankle sprain last year, which I think accounted for most of his lack of production, as well as the fact they had nothing at quarterback. This year, he's coming back fully healthy. And according to the game speed, again, his numbers did not drop off. He's still going to get a huge target share in that offense. He's still, he's much more of an explosive player at this point in his career than Demarius Thomas was, um, or than Demarius Thomas is. Let me see. They go quarterback now. No quarterbacks pick. So I'll wait. I'll wait another round of quarterback, man. I could do that all day if we want to. Let me see what running backs we have. We're already at pick one ten. So right now, nothing is really a reach, to be honest with you. Nick Chubb. Uh, Car- Ooh, I like Carry On. I'm afraid he's not going to be that great in redraft, but I like Carry On Johnson as depth because. I just, I don't know. I, I believe in Karen Johnson as a player. So if you can get him this late, something were to happen in that backfield, I think he had, he has like three down potential. He's one of those upside guys that should get good early down work as well as have three down potential. So um, I like carry on this late in the draft for sure. What I was talking about was, who, what the hell was I even talking about? Oh, Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. So at this point, he's much more explosive. And you look at Case Keenum coming in and Emmanuel Sanders is going to be that flanker that Stefan Diggs played last year. Um, as well as, you know, in three wide receiver sets, there's probably a good chance that Sanders moves into the slot and they let Cortland Sutton run routes on the outside opposing Demarius Thomas. And then if you put Emmanuel Sanders in the slot 
look at what Case Keenum did last year. Who was the slot receiver for Minnesota? It was Adam Thielen, who, according to Evan Silva, had uh, 25% target rate while he was in the slot, which was highest among all NFL wide receivers. So put Sanders in the slot for 40, 50% of his routes. And you're looking at a ton of extra targets from Keenum based on Keenum being the quarterback. The other thing I love is who is the deep threat on Denver in two wide receiver sets. It's not Demarius Thomas. It's Emmanuel Sanders. He has the speed. He's the guy who makes the catches in, you know, those deep, those deep catches. It's Emmanuel Sanders, not Demarius Thomas case Keenum. Matt Harmon did a uh, NFL next gen stats uh, study, I guess you could say. And he was talking about the the best deep ball passers in the NFL last year, best tight window throwers in the NFL last year. Case Keenum was number three on the list. It was like Matt Stafford, number one. I can't remember who number two was, but Case Keenum was number three. Good deep ball throwers, highly accurate that part of the field. Sanders is the guy who gets those targets. So I'm absolutely, the more I research, the more I fall in love with Sanders at his current ADP. Um, plus, he's, what is he, T.Y. Hilton, Marvin Jones, Chris Hogan, Emmanuel Sanders. I'm loving this team right now. I haven't even touched the quarterback position. Love that. Who went? Okay, so Matt Stafford finally went. Matt Ryan went. Still have plenty of options. This is probably when I would take a quarterback in the draft because I would probably go, I might go with two quarterbacks right here. You know, I have, uh, Jameis Winston is the guy that I love as a late round sleeper. When I do my breakout candidates for quarterback position, may or may not be kicking it off with Jameis Winston, guys. I am super excited about James Winston this year. In the 11 games he actually played in last year, or he was a starter and played the full set of snaps, he was on pace for over 309 yards a game, almost two passing touchdowns a game, has a ton of weapons, man. He is I, – I am uh, – I'm all in on Winston having an absolute monster fantasy season. I think we're going to see him put it all together this year and be the steal, the late-round steal of quarterbacks. Super, super duper excited. Uh, to take him as my late round quarterback in almost every league. So pair Jameis Winston and Andrew Luck together, both guys with high floors as well as super high ceilings. And there you go. You don't have to waste a fifth round pick on Aaron Rodgers when you could take who went before, who went after. Okay. So someone went Aaron Rodgers like at 25 overall. So that's just kind of ridiculous. You could have got a Devonta Freeman, uh, Travis Kelsey, Larry Fitzgerald, any of those guys that went right after him, you could have got, and then still gotten Jameis Winston and Dak Prescott together, guys. This is the point I'm trying to make. Don't take your quarterback early, please. If you're in a one quarterback league, if you're in a two quarterback league, different story, peoples. Um, did Aaron Hearns get picked? Alan Hearns get picked yet? All right. So I'm probably. I mean, I like Big Ben a lot too. Um, I could probably even wait another two rounds, honestly. But for the sake of argument, we'll go with Jameis Winston. And because Ben's splits are still pretty real right now, even though I think he's gonna I think he's gonna have another big year. Statistically, statistical wise. Well your boy, ooh, you heard that neck crack? I don't know if, if the mic picked up that. 241. Oh, your man's got a date in less than two hours. Monsters get me through everything though. Fuck it. We'll go to Andrew Luck. See, those are my two quarterbacks, and I waited until the 11th, 12th round to take them. You know what I'm just thinking about right now, too? I took Andrew Luck in the 15th round of my draft last year and my E-Town get down, the big one, and I can keep him for a 14th round pick. Six point touchdown per pass, six point per passing touchdown lead. So he's, he's a guy I can hypothetically keep in the 14th round, which is nice. So if his reports come out, because no one wanted to touch him last year, right? Because no one no one knew if he was going to be playing or not. And obviously, it wound out that he didn't play. I took him in the 15th round because I knew that we can keep him. Any Anyone after the 8th round, I'm allowed to keep in my league for the following season for the price of the round prior to when he was picked. So I had Andrew Luck, and I stashed him for the entire season, knowing that I'd be able to keep him for a 14th round pick this year. Savvy move by me. Savvy, savvy, savvy move. So now I have a selection of him. And I'm not sure what my other keepers are, to be honest with you. Um, check my email. Okay. So honestly, also guys, if you reach out to me via Twitter, Instagram, email or whatever, and I don't respond for a couple of days, I apologize. I have a lot of people, um, reaching out to me, but I will get back to you. I promise you that I'll try my hardest to get back to try my hardest to comment on every single comment, respond to every tweet, DM, Instagram, all that email, all that stuff. Um, so if, if it takes a few days, I apologize. Um, but I do try to get back to every single person. So just keep that in mind. If I don't, Get back to you right away. 
What else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Um, did Alan Hearns get picked? I don't remember. Did we did we find that? Did we figure that out, or did I ask that and then just run away? This is the most absurd ranking I've ever seen. Like, why is Alan Hearns underneath Jermaine Curse, Albert Wilson, Sutton? These rookie run. Oh my god! It might be the still a draft. You know, it's the move. Probably sorting this by ADP, so you have a more realistic picture. There you go. That kind of makes a little more sense. I might do a uh, Yahoo Pro League. If you guys are looking for real money leagues, you could do them on Yahoo. They have the they have what they call the Pro League, um, and it's you know it's a ten team league where you buy in um, for anywhere from like twenty dollars up to a thousand, I think, and you play against nine other people. So it's basically like you joining a money league without having to organize anything. So it's actually pretty it's pretty useful. I've used it before, and it's it's pretty fun. Um, but th- that's where you could take advantage of ADPs and stuff. Alan Hearns is one of the absolute most biggest steals in the draft this year at wide receiver. So he's someone I'll also own on every team. I'm going to own a lot of the same shares of players this year. I feel like I'm going to hit. I don't, you know, I haven't been confident the last couple of years in the guys that I like really wanted on my teams, but I am very confident this year in a lot of the later round guys like Emmanuel Sanders, Chris Hogan, and Alan Hearns as wide receivers. Another reason why I like to go so heavy on running backs is because I'm I'm really confident in those guys as wide receivers to produce as wide receiver two, three at worst. Running bike. What we got here? Not a lot left at running back. Um, not that I need more depth at running back, really. Oh, there's only like two rounds left. They're going to make me pick a kicker in defense. I'll probably take a backup tight end too, considering. Oh, no, I took Delaney, so I didn't need to do that. But again, yeah, if you're looking for any late round guys, it's Benjamin Watson being reunited in the Saints. Offense with Breeze, who had a breakout year a couple of years ago. What you want, dog? What you want, dog? What you, what you want, dog? What you want, dog? What you, what you want, dog? Uh, I'm probably going to grab. I like Devontae Booker again because I think he's got a safe floor. Uh, I think he's going to be the third down back there in Denver, even though Freeman should get a lot of work, but. Booker is a good pass catcher and a good uh, pass blocker, so he should be utilized a lot on third downs. But I'm going to draft my man Corey Clement because I think he's a big-time sleeper. I think that he played really well last year for an undrafted free agent. He surpassed Smallwood. He surpassed Pumphrey on the uh, on the depth chart. He ended up becoming basically their pass catcher down the stretch. He had a huge Super Bowl. Um, he ran well. He, he just played all around well, and all he has in front of him is J.H.I. Jai. Um, He'll compete with Sproles on third downs for pass catching work, but I think Clement's got crazy upside, to be honest with you. It's one of my favorite later round running backs that you can get. What else do I need? I don't think they're going to let me draft any more skill players. But, guys, this is a, a, a tip or trick that I usually tell to everyone that's drafting. If you are drafting prior to – what do we got? I haven't looked at the schedule, so I'm just going to take a random fucking team. Um, if you are drafting prior to the start of the year – the uh, the start of the preseason or whatever, do not draft a defense or a kicker. Like if you're drafting any time before September, don't draft a defense or a kicker. Draft a skill player with a ton of upside, like a Corey Clement. Because what happens if, you know, if it's August 12th, you draft your team and you have a defense sitting there. Well, what happens if you have Corey Clement on your bench, JGI tears his ACL. Then that Corey Clement pick just went from a 16th round pick up to like a third or fourth round value. Right. And now you just have them sitting on the end of your bench because you didn't pick a kicker in defense. And then when the time comes, when the season starts, then you can decide which guys on your bench you want to cut. And obviously it's not going to be Corey Clement anymore. It would be someone else. And then you could pick up your kicker or your defense right before the season starts. So if you draft really early, anytime before the preseason games finish, I highly suggest not drafting a kicker or a defense and uh, stacking up your team like that. And then dropping right before the season starts to pick up those other guys to fill your starting lineup. But that's going to be my team right here. And if this was my 10 team, if this was my team in a 10 team league, I would be absolutely ecstatic. There's so much depth on this bench between Michelle Hogan, Sanders, carry on Johnson. Um, and I absolutely love the starters here. Barkley and Gordon as workhorses mix in people might not think he'll be a workhorse, but if I'm right about that, and if he does break out, I have three absolute studs at running back. T.Y. Hilton should be good with Andrew Luck back there. Marvin Jones, is he was a top 10 fantasy wide receiver last year. I don't expect him to necessarily repeat, but I am very high on Matthew Stafford, so I think Jones is an absolute steal in the fifth, sixth round. Delaney Walker, you know I love. Jameis Winston, you know I love. So I'm, I'm happy with this team. 
I hope you're happy with this video. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing mock drafts. You can pre-order my draft guide, guys. There's only – you have about a week left to pre-order it for pre-order pricing. you got about a week left. July 1st, the price goes up. It includes anything you're going to need for your draft. Man, You're not going to need to buy anything else for your fantasy football draft. Um, he's nothing more than a theoretic. Man, the comments I get from y'all, y'all are crazy. Um, I don't know. Pre-order the draft guy. Go follow me on social medias. It's all linked down below in the description, and I will see y'all tomorrow morning for the live stream. Make sure you got notifications turned on.